Hey guys, Chris with Createx Colors outside our uh, building here in, in East Granby, Connecticut with Adam, our shipping manager. And uh, Adam's going to tell you a little bit about his Magnum. Hey guys, shipping manager at Createx Colors. It's my 05 Magnum RT, member of the New England Magnum Mafia. And we uh, got this paint job together to get the car down to Carlisle, Pennsylvania for the Mopar Nationals. So you guys stick around. I'm going to show you exactly how we came up with this color scheme, basically from the concept and a test panel all the way to the finished product. We're going to take you step by step from the sealer, the ground all the way up to uh, actually going over some body filler and all that. Uh, so basically take you through the steps, take you through the, the process in which I use to kind of get it done in a, in a timely manner because we were in a time crunch. So uh, stick around, check it out. You guys will see it happen. Hey guys, welcome to another installment of, uh, I guess we could call this color mixing with Chris. Uh, this is going to be a complete and uh, this particular project we're going to kind of walk through application of some epoxy primer, some Autoborn sealer, some base coat. We're going to use two different colors in this car and we're going to do a, um, actually a marbleized graphic uh, two-tone separation stripe too. So we're going to kind of give you an all-encompassing start to finish uh, complete on this particular car and it's actually kind of cool because this car belongs to our shipping manager here at Createx Colors, Adam. So Adam has learned very quickly uh, a crash course in prep and body work and uh, one of the things I want to talk about real quick before we get to the first step of this particular process is something that I'm always harping on uh, in a bunch of the other videos that we've done. If you've seen, we're always talking about prep. We get a lot of questions about how to prep, what to prep with, why we prep. Um, and this is actually a great learning uh, tool and indicator of what not to do. Unfortunately, this car has had another paint job over the existing OEM finish. And I don't know if you can see it, but there are quite a few rings where we were trying to flatten out some, some sins basically in the paint itself. And unlike what you would normally see in something where you feather this out, and feathering is just kind of bridging the surface, making it as even as possible. So flattening out from one layer to the next, you, you want a nice smooth transition. So the bigger the uh, transition is, the larger that feather, the, the more uh, less transparent or, or less apparent, I should say, it, the repair is going to be. If it's really tight, you're going to see, it's going to look like a topographical map and it's going to cause a lot of problems. Unfortunately, if you look real close, the guys that prepped this car did a fantastic job. They really did and they, they pretty much put the screws to Adam. It is shiny almost under every single layer, meaning that the prep was actually very poor. And most of the spots in the car, the flat areas, it was done okay, but anywhere that took a little bit of time, basically around the moldings, window moldings, around the door handles, you kind of come down here, we'll see a massive amount of it down here. This is where the body side moldings were, and you can see it's got a shiny edge underneath every single one of these layers, and that is a big no-no. So what we're going to do, and actually one of the reasons um, that our paint is going to work extremely well for this is our Autoborn sealer is non-reactive. So a lot of times if you're hitting this with uh, like a high solvent content primer, it's gonna cause mapping. Basically what mapping is, it's gonna look exactly like this. It'll be all one color, but it'll kind of swell up that underlying kilt because it has nothing to grab onto. The tooth, that scratch, is very minimal. This is why I always stress when you're doing something like this size, motorcycles, bikes, that kind of thing, I always would rather see you guys use sandpaper rather than a scotch pad. Scotch pad's good for the edges, kind of areas, corners and creases, but anything broad, flat, that you can get to with a DA, or at least a hand sanding application, is always best because it's gonna put a better tooth, it's gonna have a better scratch for that paint to bite into. And if you don't have that tooth, you're just gonna keep chasing this paint, and this was flaking everywhere. So, big shout out to the guys that painted this car before. If you guys are ever uh, in East Granby, come on down, I'll, give you, I'll buy you guys a beer. and. Uh, Afterwards, I'll give you a high five in the face with a bar stool because this was a terrible job in terms of prep. And that's why we always stress prepping is, is key because if you were to have to fix this, if it was a job that you were doing on your own time and you did a poor job sanding it, this is something that you'd be dealing with. And it, it, it honestly took probably twice as long to get this car to this stage because we were chasing out all these no-nos, basically, um, the rookie mistakes, really, that, that were everywhere on this car. So, moving on, we got the car completely sanded. This is all finished in 400. This is 400 grit, which is a perfect grit for our Autoborn sealer. But before I go ahead and do that, we got some bare metal spots uh, around the car and a couple spots of bodywork. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually mix up an epoxy primer. 
so I have that. It's actually a product from PPG. It's their DPLV epoxy primer, and it's nice. It's got a little bit of build to it, um, and it dries fairly fast. And one of the things we're going to do is put this on today, tonight, and we're going to let it dry overnight so I can come back tomorrow, sand that lightly, not, not crazy, but sand that, and then we're going to apply two coats of our Auroborn Sealer Black, and that's going to be the foundation for the paint job on this car. So that's key. When you're using a, a, a solvent-based paint system like that, at least for a primer, we're going to have you guys do it so you can sand it the next day. You don't want to apply it wet on wet. You have dissimilar materials, and it's going to cause problems. So we're going to let the epoxy get on here. We're going to let it dry, come back tomorrow, give it a scuff, and then we'll start putting uh, Auroborn Sealer down. So stick around. You guys will see me put a little bit of primer down. Alright guys, welcome back. It is day two. We left off and I was spraying some epoxy primer. That was a PPG LV epoxy primer. Let that sit overnight. Came in this morning, lightly sanded down those spots. I uh, was really happy with how the car looked, believe it or not. I was actually surprised at how little mapping we had going on with all the rings of paint. So I was really happy with how little sanding I really had to do to make everything nice. Uh, we went ahead and made sure, like I said, sanded all that down. Uh, and we wiped this car down, and something I wanted to talk about, uh, I didn't mention it yesterday, but uh, I did a water-based pre-clean first. So PPG SX394 was the first step, and then I finished with a SX320, which is their solvent base. So kind of have the best of both worlds to make sure there's no contamination. 320 is the weakest solvent pre-clean they have, kind of like a pre-paint uh, pre-clean. So went ahead and wiped it all down, got it all nice and clean, uh, tacked the car off, tacked the car off quite a bit, and guys, keep in mind, when you're tacking it, don't just tack off the surfaces you're gonna paint, tack off everything around it, like the masking paper, the windows, any of the pockets, anything where you have taped up. It's another thing, if you see, like most of this is taped up pretty tight. I don't wanna have creases in my paper, that kind of little caves and caverns for, for dust to, to accumulate, and then you hit it with your, your spray gun and it blows out some junk. So just keep that in mind when you're taping. Try to keep everything nice and tight and clean and intact all those surrounding areas, not just the actual paint surface when you're getting ready to spray. So I have a little bit of our Auroborn Black Sealer mixed up, 10% 4011. Uh, it's kind of humid today. It's about 88 degrees, 70% humidity, so I'm like right on that line of, of the humidity. Uh, I'm not super concerned about that because we're just gonna wait a little bit longer between coats and actually it's gonna kind of help me have a nice wet overlap. So I don't wanna dry in so fast that I get dry spray on my overlap. So. You know, again, pay attention to the conditions you're spraying in. We're in a booth, we kind of have the ability to control it a little bit. Uh, when it comes to humidity and all that, we can always warm up the air if we needed to and kind of bake off a little bit of that moisture, but then it's gonna be really hot when you're spraying, so it's not the ideal thing either. So, uh, I got my spray gun loaded up. I'm using my Iwata LDX, the W400 LDX air cap, it's a 1.3. I use this gun for pretty much all my sealer, love it. it sprays really nice. 1.3, right around 20 PSI, kind of right where they want to be. Wide open, I close up my uh, fan like a quarter turn, but I'm wide open on my fluid control. So we're gonna go ahead and start spraying some sealer.
All right, guys, our second coat of sealer is on. We opted to do two coats. The first coat I put down, uh, look for any kind of issues that we saw uh, in the sealer itself. I can actually give you a little quick sneak peek. It's in the booth right now drying, and that's exactly what it should look like. It's like velvet, nice and smooth, really slick. I don't see any issues except for where I actually tripped over the air hose and got a little drip, so I got to fix that. <laughs> um, but we're going to take this opportunity and we're going to mix a little base coat. So for this car, uh, it's going to be two-tone. The top is going to be our pearl black. It's our wicked pearl black straight out of the bottle for the top, kind of where the uh, little kind of center where the door handles are, roughly there. And then the bottom, we're going to do our wicked charcoal metallic, our metallic charcoal. So I'm going to show you guys how I mix. So now we're going to make a lot of paint because we have a bunch of parts that we're going to paint as well. So I'd rather have a little left over that I can always just grab and go, even though it's the same, we're not doing anything to this, it's kind of stock in terms of formula. I still like it to be out of the same container and just to make sure everything's consistent. So I'm gonna mix in one of these guys. This is a pitcher, it's actually a two quart pitcher. So it's two quarts is more than enough for the paint that I gotta do on the top half of this car and then have some left over uh, for like I said, doing any kind of issues or any kind of fixing any other things that we see that we don't like and painting some of the other parts. So I'm gonna mix this four to one and then 10% reduce or four parts of our metallic color, the, the Wicked Pearl Black, and uh, one part of our 4050. So real simple, there's actually a four to one ratio right here on the side of this guy. So I'm gonna go right to, so there's my four to one. So that's four to one to one, but I'm not gonna do one part that's kind of a lot of reducer. So I'm gonna go to three with my Pearl Black, right up to that three line. there all right and then because I went to the three in the first one I got to go to three in the one so that gives me a nice 20% mix of our 4050 so we're gonna go to that three in the one column and that right there is 20% 4050 and if you guys have seen some of the other videos typically when I'm spraying metallics and pearls I'm always I want to be right around 20 to 25 percent so that's where I am four to one so now we'll go ahead and I think this is roughly, it's about 50, 51 ounces. So that's five ounces of reducer, right, at 10%. So I'm gonna go five ounces. Just using the numbers on the side, that's 52. I'm gonna go right up to that 56, because it was just shy of that, so it's really, it's like just about five ounces. So there you go. That's my ratio. I get this mixed really well, stir it. And I'm gonna let this sit for about 10, 15 minutes while I go in and sand out that little drip that I have. This is what I was talking about before. Uh, I've, I've mentioned it in a bunch of other videos. We're always kind of harping on that. To let this sit once you reduce it for about 10 to 15 minutes to really let everything kind of get acclimated. The reducer breaks down the surface tension in the paint. It just kind of becomes one nice uniform mixture. When you're reducing water-based paint, it's not as fast as a process as solvent-based. When you hit it with, with a solvent-based reducer, it's like instant. As soon as you hit it, it breaks it down immediately. This kind of has a tendency to kind of float and separate a little bit, so you gotta really mix it up really good and then let it sit. So that's about 10 to 15 minutes is what I need to fix that little issue on the side of that door. So then we'll uh, come back and you guys can check me out when I start spraying some base coat. Hi right, guys, we are back in the booth. Everything's dry. I went ahead and fixed my problems. I <laughs> uh, just gave it, a, you can show you real quick, there's a couple right here and a little bit right here. I actually stepped on a hose and it kinked and it kind of caused a little splatter. So that's a beauty part of the Autoborn sealer. I went back in with a little bit of 600 dry and just lightly feathered out my little sins. You can actually see a remnant of it right there in the door handle. That'll be all right, we'll scuff that off. Uh, real quick, I just want to talk about uh, the process basically in painting in here. This is essentially, it's, just, it's referred to as a semi downdraft booth, but it's essentially a cross flow, meaning air is coming in from the ceiling out through that plenum. So, really, our draft is going this way. So, when I'm painting a car or anytime you're doing something large like this, you kind of want to keep in mind your air movement, your airflow, the direction in which you're painting in. And you should always keep a wet edge, right? So, my air is coming across this way. I want to start at the front of the car and move my way to the back. If I start painting in the back, all that overspray gets carried over the top of the car and the front of the car. By the time I get to the hood and the front fenders, 
it's going to feel like 36 grit. It's going to be real gnarly in terms of texture because all that overspray is just kind of settling down. If it doesn't make it to the filter, it's going to settle down on the surface of the car. And it, like I said, it's just going to be like painting over popcorn ceiling, right? So if you start in the back, any overspray, theoretically, will fall into wet paint and it'll melt in a little bit better than having that dry spray. Uh, so we're going to start basically the front of the car. I have my pearl metallic, or, or my, my black uh, pearl mixed up, ready to go. You guys saw that. I just, one thing I really want to touch on, uh, I didn't talk about straining it, but I mixed it in that two quart cup. Next to me, I had a strainer. There's a 190 micron strainer. So after I let it sit for 15 minutes, I poured it through my strainer into my PPS cup. My PPS cup does have a filter in it. That's a 200 micron. These are solvent uh, lids. They have two different kinds. They have the, the clear ones are white, are 200 micron, and the small, the blue ones are 125. So uh, we kind of go for the, the bigger ones here just because we have paints that are kind of different viscosities and the effect colors. A lot of our metallics sometimes don't pass through such a small micron. So it's easier for me to just use a smaller micron strainer and then always have the same lid. And these will work really well for clear coat as well. Sometimes clear, high, thick, solids, clears will get kind of choked up going through a 125 micron trainer. So that pretty much wraps that up. This is a uh, Iwata Entech. This is Supernova Entech. This is my base coat gun, the, the green cap. This is a 1.3. I'm spraying at 26 PSI, which is what they recommend. That's what's right on the air cap. Um, I basically, same thing. I'm full open on my fluid control, and I close up my fan about a about one turn, one and a quarter turns, because this is like a really big fan. And kind of the tail end of that fan sometimes causes just a little bit of dry spray. So tidy up the fan, just basically one turn. And my uh, fan control and fluid is wide open. So I'm 26 PSI, 50% overlap. This is what it's gonna look like. Hey guys, welcome back. We are kind of in the midst of feeling out what we got for, for graphics here and, and how I want this to look. So I kind of went ahead and I started messing around with a little bit of fine line. I'm at the point where I actually kind of like where it's going. So rather than do this as a practice, I'm going to run with it. Um, we always talk about test panels and the importance of doing a test panel. So we kind of had, this is essentially what we have going on. This is a test panel for the car. So you have the pearl black up top. We're going to marbleize with some silver or fine aluminum, actually, uh, is going to be the base for that over black, which the pearl black is going to work fine for that. And we're going to do a little bit of spatter on the inside of the design with it positively taped, meaning this will stay taped and we'll splatter inside. And then at the very last portion of it, when I go in and pinstripe it, we're gonna splatter a little bit more over the outside edge. So it's gonna look really cool. It's a very easy to achieve effect. The hardest part is actually just taping, um, but there's a lot going on and it actually is a real subtle kind of a graphic effect that looks a lot more dramatic than what it takes in terms of effort to kind of get it that way. So a little bit of sh simple shading, some airbrush work, and it's gonna look really cool. So. Originally, I was going to kind of freehand the whole car and kind of make it symmetrical but non-symmetrical, but I kind of like how it's going, and I'm getting a little crazier in terms of the lines. You know, a lot of times, this particular panel and doing just a panel, it's short, and the last thing I wanted to do is just have kind of like positive, positive saw marks, you know, like we're going to have just a band, essentially, of 
graphics. And, and I kind of didn't want that on this car, and the owner doesn't really want it to look that way either. He kind of wants it a little more organic, so that's kind of where we are here. Uh, and now in doing so, I kind of like how it looks. I kind of want to match the other side. So if you guys don't know how to make a pattern, um, we're going to do that. I'm going to actually show you how to do that. So I'm going to continue on, get my fine line striped. I'm actually working on just the bottom edge of the graphics right now. So I'll wrap it around the back side of the car, all the way to the tailgate, and I'll come to a stopping point. And then when I'm happy with it, we're going to go ahead and, and make a pounce pattern. I'll show you guys how to do that. Really simple. You need two tools, basically a chalk bag and a little pounce wheel. So we'll show you guys how to do that. Quick and easy way to do it. Uh, make it real simple to, to basically make the exact mirror image on the other side of this car. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue on getting the rest of this thing striped out. And uh, when we come back, we'll show you guys how to do a pattern. Okay, guys, welcome back. We figured we'd give you kind of a quick little uh, clip on what it is I'm doing here. Um, when we last left off, I was laying out the side of the car, getting kind of some, some artwork done there in terms of that two-tone split. And we talked about the test panel and showed you guys that. Um, we kind of opted to do kind of an off-center, asymmetrical kind of graphic on the hood as well. So it's not going to be mirror image. We're kind of just leaning towards one side. I think it's, I've always kind of been a fan of that. It's kind of cool. Something real simple, kind of tribally, flamey, just cool, just to break up the, the monotony of just the, the plain hood. Uh, and I thought this would be a good time to kind of talk about uh, a couple different masking products and kind of the technique behind it. You see I did this with fine line tape. This is eighth inch fine line. Kind of just let it rip in terms of how this layout was going to be. Uh, and I'm going ahead and I started back masking this with a product. This is kind of old school. This is, I'm familiar with it. You guys might be familiar too. This is a company called Conform or R-Tape, the Conform series. So this is a six inch roll and this is a 24 inch roll. Um, this is a high tack, what they consider high tack. This is basically what they use in the, in the vinyl industry and it's called transfer mask, right? So if you had die cut or, or cut uh, vinyl decals or lettering, when you were to peel it off the backing, they would weed it, get rid of all that extra vinyl, and then they put this over the top and squeegee it out and it allows them to then in turn peel those decals off the backing, the, the, the non-stick stick backing basically, and put it on a vehicle or whatever it is, and it's easy enough that it will, it's, it's repositionable. You know? So it's tacky enough to hold, but it's not so tacky that when you do cut it and start pulling it, it's not going to start lifting everything and start ripping off what you have. Like it's, again, so you can see here, I squeegee this out, but I can very easily take this off and reposition it, work out some air bubbles, you can squeegee it. And again, it just comes in a bunch of different lengths, which makes it really easy to then, again, go ahead over your fine line and then see what you need to tape. And now it's, it's kind of semi-transparent, we call it, so you can go back through and cut. And anytime you're cutting, I, I prefer using a, uh, an X-Acto blade because I feel like you have a little bit more control in terms of pressure. So what you don't want to do is push or have to push so hard that you pierce this tape because then you'll see a slice and then you might end up a little bit of paint bleed. So one tip I can always give, if you're doing this, whether you're using a single edge blade or, or an X-Acto type or a, a knife like this, a hobby knife, get a fresh blade. You know, throughout the taping and cutting of this project, I'll probably go through four or five of these blades at least. Because as soon as it starts to not cut, what it'll do is it'll kind of make this choppy. And then if you have to go back over and cut again and cut and you start pulling and it's lifting, it's just gonna cause you more problems. It's way easier to just put a fresh blade in here, kind of almost like every panel you know, put a nice, clean, fresh blade in there. Um, I have noticed over time, it seems like the, the sharpness of the durability of the blades are not like what they used to be. So you might wanna, again, just kind of food for thought, go through and, and replace them frequently. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. Um, something like this, this is a tape from 3M. It's called a precision masking tape, and it is awesome. I actually have it mounted to uh, one of these uh, masking tape holders that we actually got from our friends at Spray Gunner. Um, these are really cool, works really well, especially for projects like this in the booth. But this tape, I'll show you right now, for an application like this, it is extremely transparent. And it, again, it has the same kind of properties of this transfer paper, very easy to see through. You can draw on this, you can cut on it, and again, you got a couple different widths, it cuts very nice. So you kind of have a few different options. And, and the whole 
basis, the whole reasoning for this, instead of using masking tape, I've seen guys do it with like three quarter inch tape and you go through and tape every single time. That's cool, I mean, if it works, it works, but something like this can be a lot faster, right? So now I can go ahead and peel this negative out and I'm not gonna cover the entire hood. What I just wanna do is give myself kind of a buffer on the edges here. So now I have a nice, basically a straight line and I'm just gonna back mask this with some masking paper off my masking machine. So I kind of have a nice straight edge, straight line I can tape right to. I can just drape paper over this to keep the overspray off for, for the next step, which is gonna be this, the beginning of the marbleizing on this. So I am going to go ahead and continue on taping this guy up. And uh, when we come back from this, I'll show you guys what I was talking about, kind of that old school trick of using a pounce pattern to uh, mirror image that side of the car on this side and show you exactly how easy it is, real simple to do. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. All right guys, welcome back. Now we're gonna quickly talk about creating that pounce pattern that I mentioned earlier. So you, as you can see, this is actually a roll, a remnant roll of uh, 18 inch masking paper from my masking machine, right? So it is fairly transparent. Um, I used to have a big roll of tracing paper that was about 18 inches too, and that worked really well for this, but I can't find it. So in a pinch, you guys can use paper like this. You, as you can see, once you lay it on the car, I can actually see through it enough to see my fine line tape. So what I'm gonna do is, the way I laid this out, I kind of overlap the front headlight pocket, right? So this comes right to the end of the front fender, and this is my headlight pocket right here. So I can actually go ahead and make a reference mark. Follow this profile of this fender, right? It's kind of like a chalk rubbing almost. So there's my headlight pocket. And then I'll come down here, and here's where the bumper meets the fender. Right, and here's the end. Now I have my wheel opening right here, basically. So I can actually go ahead and just kind of ride this line as well. And all I'm trying to do, essentially, I can even ride that, the wheel arch right here as well, right? To give myself reference points that I can key on the other side. So when I flip this over, I can line it up to my fender where my fender is. Here's my fender jam where it rolls into the hood, right? I can come up to here where the fender meets the A-pillar, right? And I can make a line right here and then come down into my door area, right? So here's my door gap and follow that right through all the way to the bottom here. And now I have an another reference point. Because what's gonna happen is this is gonna move a little bit, right? We got, believe it or not, even though this is relatively linear, there are a lot of compound curves, especially in the fender, right? Because you got the wheel arch coming out this way. So you kind of have to take into consideration a little bit of movement when you are gonna do this. And what I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and I can cut a reveal in here so this will relax and I'll trace all these out. But I'm just gonna go ahead and continue on. Here again, here's the upper portion of the door where my belt molding is right here. So I'll make a line right in here. This is where my belt molding goes. I can even reference the end of this door where the mirror would essentially sit right there, right at the top of the edge. And again, all I'm doing is going through and giving myself reference points to match up to on the other side when I flip this over. So here's the other door. I can go ahead and feel where the door handle pocket is. All right, there's the cup, here's the front receiver for the front portion of the handle. There's that, and then the door handle itself is right in here. You can kind of get a feel for it there. All right, so there's that. And this is just to line up on the other side, to kind of make sure everything is going the same. Now, you're not gonna be looking at this both sides at the same time. So it's, it's kind of subjective, but this is to, a, a, just a tool to keep you guys in the right spot. So it is that much easier. Once I go ahead and make this outline, I can flip it over to the other side and I can match up my points as I go and, and make sure that we're where we want to be in terms of that mirror image. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on. Just make my lines. And then what I'm going to do, 
this rear door opening is just go ahead and actually trace my fine line tape as well. And when we come back, when I'm done doing all this, I go back here, hit my tail light pocket. And you could kind of do the same thing. There's a body line here. You can kind of give yourself like a reference of where that body line is, like a high spot here, just so you know you're in the, in the right area. And if I come down here, same deal, I got the lower section of my quarter panel right here. I pulled the table or the paper a little too short and tear it, but that's okay. We can improvise that. It's not the end of the world. It's real, real close in terms of that line. All right, so here's my wheel arch again right here. So I can come in and get this arch right there and the top part of that arch right here. And that's it. So what I will do now is go ahead and start tracing all my lines. Just like that. All my fine line. And as I'm working, I'm kind of making sure that I'm holding this nice and flat so it really doesn't shift and move too much. The last thing you want to do is be high with this and then lay everything out and then you put it to, oh no, you know, here it is. So just kind of as you work the panel. The other thing you could do is you could do four individual ones. You could do one just for the quarter panel, one for the door, one for the front door, one for the fender, and you can line up two if it's just you and you can't really, you have something that long, it's kind of, it's not too easy, you know, to make sure, but then it's a lot easier to really make sure you're that much more precise. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and uh, when we come back, I'll show you guys what we're talking about with the pounce wheel. All right, guys, welcome back. On the floor behind me, I have the side of this car. <laughs> uh, and the reason it's on cardboard, uh, not just to save my knees, uh, I would need a lot more cardboard, uh, is I need a little bit of a cushion. So when I pounce on that, and I'll show you right here, this set is an old set. I got this, this, it doesn't look old, but it is very old. And this is a pounce wheel, all right? So it's essentially like a little spur. And these are all just different sizes and the different size will just give you a different pattern in terms of a perforation. So having it on a piece of cardboard helps to make sure that perforation goes all the way through. If you're doing it on something hard, it's not going to penetrate the paper and you're going to struggle to kind of make that hole. So the cardboard allows just a little cushion so I can go through it. And all I'm going to do, let me show you guys, is ride that line, right? So here is the upper portion, right? Push down, just follow this all the way through. Ride this line all the way to the next portion, right? So there's my door jam, that's a good stopping point. And just continue on tracing my pattern all the way through. This is like a real, real simple way of doing this. So there's my other point. Come back. All right. So I'm going to follow this all the way through. I'm going to do the rest of this pattern. And what might end up happening, because it's just me in here, I might end up just kind of opting to do one section at a time, like the quarter panel. I'll just do the quarter and then move on do the door and then move on to the next door and then come and do the front fender. Everything else was pretty easy to uh, trace the, except for that front fender just because like I, I mentioned that that compound curve so I don't know if you guys can see it but all the way up front I actually went ahead and cut a little bit of that wheel arch to kind of give it a little relax so the paper would kind of move to where I wanted to and if you had to you can go ahead and if you had different areas that you had to kind of make the paper do what it's doing to follow that body line, you can always tape this and then just make a note so you know that you'd have to actually go ahead and reverse tape that to mirror image on the other side. Uh, so once this is done, again, real simple. This is old, old, old school technique. Um, there's companies that make pounce pads. Um, this is real simple. So this is chalk line chalk in a sock, a new sock, it's not an old sock. And this is blue, obviously. 
and then I have one with white. And these are kind of the two colors that I use the most. Obviously, it's a darker color car. The white is going to show up really well on the black. And once I have those holes, you're basically just going to go through and rub this out over the surface. I'll show this on the car, but we'll show it real quick while we're doing this too. And it's going to leave a transfer. It's hard to see here. It really didn't show through. Because what I'm actually going to do is, when I flip this paper over, take a little bit of 400 sandpaper, right? And just lightly sand the back side of those perforations so it opens them up, so it allows the, the dust to go through. And when you do this, you don't want to, I'll show it again, like when we're actually ready to do it, you don't want to hammer this thing with dust because the last thing you want to do is get dust everywhere. You're trying to contain it to just those perforations. So I'm going to go ahead and go through and get this whole thing outlined one more time. And uh, when we come back, I'll show you guys how we do it on the car. All right, guys, got it completely pounced. Went ahead and sanded like I talked about. Hit it with a little 400 on the backside. And, and when I say sand it, I mean, all we're doing is just kind of rubbing over those openings, those holes, just to open them up a little more so there's nothing left over. So when I do hit this with the chalk, it's going to penetrate. Um, you can see I got it flipped over. Actually, what I did was I went ahead and just my reference lines, I darkened them up with a Sharpie because it was a little difficult to see through on the other side with just that pencil. So. As you can see, I got all my lines, my tail light pocket right here, my door handle pocket, my door opening, the arch, everything that we kind of went ahead and illustrated and kind of highlighted just to have a reference line is all lined up on the car. And what I'm going to do is just slowly work at this point because of the size of this, I'm going to work quarter panel, then I'll go ahead and I'll do the door and then I'll move to the front door and then I'll move, work my way to the front of the fender. Only because it is a little difficult to kind of keep this all in check um, in terms of the movement, right? Again, like we talked about, it's a piece of paper and we have a little bit of compound curve going on, so it's kind of difficult. So one of the things that makes that easy is actually these little cheap, cool little magnets, right? So I can go ahead and put it right there and I can put one down here. So that didn't stick. <laughs> I can put it right there put it on the right side and it's going to work much better. Um, and it's just going to kind of help locate this a little bit better. Again, this is not going to be like a hundred percent in terms of how this, um, it's a perfect kind of a representation, right? This is designed to get you as close as possible. And then you can just kind of fudge it as you work your way through, but it's, it's definitely there to give you a reference line in terms of, where you're going to lay your tape. So what I'll do is go ahead right now, grab my pet, my, my pounce sock, and uh, I'll show you guys. And again, the key is not to hammer this thing with chalk. It's not to get a whole bunch on here. I'm just going to ride the edge over my lines. That was a real lot that came out right at the beginning, but that's okay. And we're just going to dust all those holes. All right, so we're going to come right to the edge of the door here and then come to my line here. Yeah, and when you're doing this, it is going to make a little bit of a mess. But the nice thing is it's chalk and it's not uh, anything that's really aggressive in terms of affecting your surface. It's not going to do any damage to the paint as long as the paint is totally dry which it is. Uh, so it's not like it's going to do any harm, but you just have to make sure when you're done, you do go ahead and give it a good wipe and a blow off. So what we'll do is real quick, show you guys what I mean. Get my magnets off, lightly pull off the tape just to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. And as you can see, there's my pattern, right? So what you're going to do, lightly blow off the extra and then I go back with my fine line tape and I'll start tracing that out and uh, when we come back we'll have this guy totally taped up and ready to go on to step two. Hey guys welcome back I am putting the finishing touches on here just going ahead and following my pattern you guys can see uh, I opted to just kind of work in sections so I split it in the middle 
only because of what we were talking about in terms of, of the shape and the, the scope. It's very easy to trace the entire pattern, but you can see I ended up cutting it and I split it right on the door. So just like that, got the back section done. And I actually just left this taped up just to make sure everything was good. You could see all I did was what we talked about, just pouncing it, uh, rubbing a little chalk bag over. You can, you can pat it, you can kind of rub it over the pattern and it leaves that behind. If there's a little bit of dust, a little bit too much, like I said, go really easy. You can lightly just blow it off and it won't, unless you really hammer it, it's not gonna blow away all the chalk. So unless you really stand right on top of it, any, any kind of residual dust that you have left over, you can just kind of eliminate that lightly and then go ahead and tape and then give it a good wipe down. And uh, that's it, we're ready to start back masking everything and we'll start ready, uh, we'll get ready to start doing our marbleizing process. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this fender and this door section and we'll see you guys in a little bit. Hey guys, welcome back. We are in the final stages of doing this and I am actually going ahead right now and just cutting out everything that is going to stay masked up. So basically I'm ready to pull my mask back and expose the areas of the graphics that I do want to get painted. And then what it's going to do is positive, negative, positive mask, all this. So this up top here is going to stay that charcoal color. The inside is going to be the marbleized and then we're going to do our fade down here. So for right now, I'm just going to cut this inside section out and then we're going to tape this off so none of the overspray falls down on there. And if you want, you can uh, take a walk with me over to this side. You can see my little helper has been getting everything taped up that I'm not spraying. So this is everything that you're going to see and that side of the car will end up looking like this side right here. So you can see all open. This will all be marbleized. This is going to get taped off the same way so we don't get any overspray and then what's going to happen is we're going to have the charcoal metallic from here down after we're done marbleizing. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the final, final, final round of taping and then we'll spray everything in about 15 seconds. <laughs> so. You guys stick around and we'll see you in a little bit. All right guys, this is it. We are finally, finally there, ready for paint. Uh, everything masked, everything taped, back taped, back masked, tightened up nice, no overspray anywhere. Went ahead and made sure the, con the car was skirted at the bottom and taped off the roof just in the event that any overspray gets at the top. We don't wanna have to deal with that. I finally figured out how those magnets worked <laughs> from the last time. They stick on one side, so I was able to get all that figured out. Everything's masked up, ready to go. And like I said before, it's going to be about prob literally probably a half an hour's worth of spraying, and we had all this time taping this up, but that's just how it is. So real quick before I actually start the marbleizing, and for the marbleizing, I'm going to use our Wicked Aluminum, our fine aluminum. And the reason I'm using the fine is because I kind of want that real clean, bright background. I don't want a flake because I'm actually going to go ahead and dust a little bit of our Hot Rod Sparkle White and our Hot Rod Sparkle Gold and kind of mess around with the colors in between before I start doing the candy over the top of that to achieve what that, that test panel looks like. But because this is pearl black, I am going to go ahead and dust one coat of our Wicked Opaque Jet Black. Um, I've marbleized a bunch of stuff and I'm sure it would be fine, but our, our Pearl Black is a little more on the gray side. It's got a little gray metallic kind of look to it. And I really want this to be dark and rich. So to, to go through all this and then kind of look at it and say, man, I wish I did a black background. It's just cheap insurance to make sure it's really stark in terms of that contrast. Because believe it or not, even just if I painted one right here in black, you would see a big difference between that and the rest of it. So I'm going to go ahead and just dust a coat. And the reason I'm using the Wicked uh, Opaque is it actually cuts better. We've covered this in some other videos. Uh, rather than our sealer black, uh, our sealer black is really good at like edge to edge, a whole panel. But because I have tape on here, I have graphics, I'm gonna use our Wicked Opaque. It just, it cuts better. And rather than tearing, the resin that's, that this is made out of just cuts with tape better than our sealer does. Like again, our silver, or any of our sealers are really better off kind of edge to edge across a whole panel. So that's the reasoning for that. I'm gonna go ahead and dust a coat of black on. Just one coat really should cover this. It's almost gonna go on like guide coat. I'm not trying to hammer this on because the last thing I wanna do is start building a lot of material and bridging all my tape lines as well. 
So I'm going to go ahead and dust the coat of black and uh, let that dry off and then we'll come back and we will start marbleizing. So I'm going to mix both my colors at the same time and uh, when we come right back I'll get the booth running and you guys can see me spray some black. Hi guys, we're back, ready to spray, the booth is running. One thing I want to talk about real quick, I did go ahead and wipe this down, wipe the sides down with a solvent wax and grease remover, right? So I use our SX or PPG's SX320, that's a solvent based pre-clean. It is a very mild kind of a pre-paint uh, wipe down. At this point, because we have water-based paint on the car, the last thing you want to do is use an alcohol or a, uh, a water-based uh, prep salt because what you're going to do is actually soften the paint. So it's kind of like wiping down a base coat job, solvent base coat with reducer. It's going to do the same thing. So at this point forward, solvent only. So just a real quick wipe down just to make sure there was no fingerprints or any kind of residual junk and then uh, just a quick tack rag, right? And just kind of dust that off, make sure there was no powder left over from the chalk. And uh, one tip, uh, if you guys are not familiar with that, which you guys should be, um, when you're wiping this, go with the direction of your points, right? Don't go into them anytime you have any graphics like this because you run the risk of grabbing an edge here, rolling it back, and you might not realize it until you're already spraying, and then you got to fix it. So always just kind of wipe in the direction of your graphics, right? So all my points, most of the points are going this way, a couple are coming back. Just food for thought, keep yourselves out of trouble. So I'm going to go ahead and put down a coat of black.